Works, and welcome to Subjective Thoughts. And our book for today is Endar's Game. This is the first book in the Endar Saga series by Orson Scott Card. Now there is uh, fighting, some violence, killing, aliens, and uh, oh, a bit more violence in this one. So if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Oh, so spoilers. All right. Now, uh, this was sort of a reread. And I say sort of because years ago when I was still in school, I read or I started reading Endar's Game, but in the Hebrew translation. And for a reason that I, I don't remember even why, I never finished it. I got very close to the end of the book and I didn't finish reading it. Yeah, I, I just can't remember why. But anyway, uh, this year I bought the book uh, again, but in uh, in English, and uh, finally finished reading it. And wow, was it <laughs> was it something? Right, the, the story is uh, there's it's a it's supposed a bit more of a futuristic world. Um, I don't. I can't remember, but I don't think... I don't remember if they mentioned what year it is. It took me, all, like, two months to finish it. And I can't uh, remember if they mentioned a year. Um, may, maybe they do, but I, I really can't remember. I don't like a comic. It's <laughs> just easy to go and check, but... Yeah, I, I, I don't know what year this is supposed to be in. The books, the first book was written in, I think, the late 80s as, as well, so... Anyway, yeah, it's a little more of a futuristic world. Uh, no flying cars, but, you know, tablets, the internet, uh, lives are different. Um, you're only allowed to have, I think, two children. And uh, only you're asked specifically to have a third for a purpose. But yeah, all of this is because there was a war with an alien race and it's called the Buggers. So in the first invasion, the Buggers came to Earth and tried to conquer it and somehow barely, um, barely uh, the human race managed to uh, defeat them. But barely. Then during the second invasion, they came to, uh, the buggers came to colonize the Earth. And this time they had this one brilliant commander that managed to just kill all of them. But since then, they've been worried about a third invasion. And thus, uh, the government, one government or a few started this whole thing of looking for a new commander. But looking in one for, uh, through children. So now they're in the especially genetically born children. So they probably did some manipulations and shit. And that's why people are allowed to have a third, a third child. So they're, they're looking for this, you know, like one perfect kid that will uh, command, uh, lead the command against the buggers. So thus we have Andar or Andrew Wigan. Endar is a nickname his sister gives him. So he's the third of his family. There's his older brother, Peter, who they wanted to use, but he was way too violent, too evil. There's a sister, Va uh, Valentine, but she's too much of a pacifist. And then there's Endar, who, unfortunately for him, happens to be just, uh, just who they need. So throughout the book, Endar is six years old. There's this um, a little device they put into these kids in the back of their necks to monitor them and see if they're what they need. So Endar has his own device, then it's taken out, and it's decided that he is the one that they need. So at six years old, they send him to a school, to a battle, a battle school up in space. So he leaves his family and is sent to battle school, where he learns for a few years until he's uh, nine. Now, throughout all this, there's uh, Colonel Graf and, and someone else. Uh, every chapter starts with the adults that monitor and talking. 
And so he goes for battle school, makes friends, and, and the pre they continue to pressure him to make him into the best commander. And so for a lot of those years, he's lonely, he's put under pressure. And after four years, they uh, graduate him to move on to uh, command school, not pre-command school, even straight to command school. And, and, and yeah, there's, there's so many details here, his relationships, it, there's twice where he kills uh, two boys, but two boys that uh, just won't leave him alone. Once uh, when he's six and in school, regular school, and then once in command in uh, battle school. So yeah, and, and yet he kills them in self-defense. I mean, because he wants to, and they, he doesn't even know at uh, the time that he killed them. He just know that he hurt them badly. And again, the adults keep manipulating him. He goes, he gets to uh, command school, and he's sent to this planet, a little not planet, but a little uh, rock that the ass, uh, the buggers used. And that's where he sends eventually, and then they bring out Mazar Rekham. I'm probably mispronouncing it. That's the commander that, in the second invasion, managed to kill the buggers. They sent him to fly in space so he wouldn't die. So he would be there to, if they finally found the one kid that would be their commander. So at yeah, battle school, everyone's very young. They they graduate eventually. Um, and Andar makes friends there and also makes enemies because he ends up being uh, one of the most, well, the, the most brilliant commander they probably had. They give him an army of uh, boys that don't know what they're doing, but he still he manages to turn them into very good soldiers and uh, troon, troon leaders. So yeah, the, the, the poor kid goes through some hell and he hasn't even reached his teenhood. Now while this is happening, meanwhile on Earth, uh, his older brother Peter and his sister Valentine, Peter wants to uh, rule the world. So he creates uh, personas for him and his sister Valentine to get into the political space and start talking. Because there's also this uh, special pact that was done after the second invasion on uh, between, I don't know, the Americans, I think the Russians and someone else, another nation. And, yeah, the, the, pol the political stuff is uh, <laughs> a bit hard for me, though it's in this uh, book. But, yeah, so they do that. They create these two personas. Uh, one argues for, uh, they for war to break the pact, and one argues the opposite. It's a, And, of course, so what we'll, fi we'll find out is them, but uh, the, the army the, or the IF here... They have, they do find out about them anyway, so it doesn't matter. But they just let them be for now. There's also a point where they send Endar back uh, after battle school. They send him back to Earth because he refuses to go on to uh, command school, and they use Valentine to uh, to get him to do it to convince him. After talking to Valentine, he goes on to the command school. Then he meets uh, Mazar and. Now, and our throughout all this time, no one ever really told him what the buggers are. And throughout the book, really, yeah, you know that they are the buggers, and they almost don't seem real. Because all Ender does in battle school is play games, play battle games, learn strategies and all that. But that's it, the buggers, you know, there's no, like, there's no books, there's no detailed videos, there's nothing. They always, you know, seem like a faraway concept throughout the book than, actu than an actual menace. At times it even felt like, are these buggers even real? Uh, what are they? So then, uh, finally, when he reaches the command school, and, well, they, they teach him stuff there, and then the Mazar becomes his teacher... He tells the uh, first that the buggers are all mostly, it seems, are female... And then, and he tells them that the way he beat them the first time is that they, they are still bugs. Very evolved bugs, but bugs nonetheless. And the, the reason Mazar managed to win back then was he destroyed the queen. He destroyed the ship with the queen. Once the queen was dead, because in the second invasion they came to populate, the, the, uh, to colonize the earth. 
and they brought a queen to produce the, you know, to, to birth more buggers. And so once he killed her, like with ants, the rest of them just stopped functioning. That was it. They stopped functioning, they didn't do anything after that. So they just laid there until, well, they died, basically. So he, he said that they have, uh, so Mazar tells him they have to fly to to the pla to their planet to uh, destroy them before they destroy the humans. So it, how I thought this was going to go is that they were going to teach Endar and then send him to the planet where the buggers are. But as it turns out, it, it, they, they just have spaceships that already went there and he's just going to command them from afar. So the, that that part I, I didn't remember at all. So Deander begins uh, to do uh, again more uh, computer simulations of games, and then his friends, like his best uh, his best soldiers, if you will, they're also brought to the command school, and together they uh, every day they have these uh, battles, until his final test arrives. Now, during it, Endar gets very sick from all the stress. He's puking blood. I mean, this, this poor little kid. <laughs> Shit in hell. So he does the final test where it's it just seems impossible. There's a bunch of commanders, Colonel Graf, they're all watching him. And he's like, and, he, and Mazar in his, you know, gives him an impossible task. Just uh, like an impossible, and Anna just said, you know what? I'll still do it. I would, you know, I'll, I'll do it how I'll do it. If you're going to cheat, then I'm going to cheat. And Endar manages. He beats the game. He reaches the the planet in the simulation and destroys it. And then uh, th that's it. And then he turns around. And uh, everyone th that were watching in the room, they're crying. Then the Colonel Graf comes to hug him and congratulate him. And it turns out it wasn't a test and it wasn't a fucking game. This was the actual war against the buggers. Endar was commanding the forces and he destroyed the planet of the buggers. He destroyed all of them. And Endar is just empathetic after that. He just leaves the room and goes to sleep. And then he's awoken by Mazar and Colonel Graf and they can see that he's, you know, he's broken. And he just tells them to leave him alone. Now, after that, of course, everything was shown, everything was uh, videotaped, or, well, not, vi not videotaped in this universe, but yeah, everything was on video. They've been playing it on Earth, all hell broke loose. The, like, the, ba the battles, the command school they're on, this little uh, rock they're on, that used to belong to the buggers. Now, there's Russians there, and there's a whole, uh, also chaos there, because they want to kill Endar, some of them. Yeah, it's, it's a whole mess, but eventually it calms down, things get peaceful on Earth, and Andar still can't believe that he just, just destroyed all of the buggers, that he was lied to. And the reason they lied to him, because if he knew he was, this was it, and he was going to kill all of them, he wouldn't do it. Because he, he's not like Peter, he, just, he, he wouldn't be able to do it, so they tricked him. But you know, now he's got all these medals, and... And then, um, well, the things uh, progress after that, and uh, Endar stays there. Colonel Graf goes back to Earth uh, with the um, general. Was Anderson a general? I can't remember now. With, with Anderson, and they're discussing. So, um, and that Endar is not going to come back to Earth. That uh, who Valentine, her avatar, who she uh, played has decided to permanently retire and that's is going to join now that the buggers have been defeated they're going to send spaceships to their planet to colonize it and to other places as well so andar is still there uh, all of his friends have been sent back to earth and you know it, now he's, he's not gonna see them again and uh, then Valentine, and so, you know, he, he starts just doing things around uh, there in the command school, just uh, helping here and there, because, you know, his uh, profession, if you will, is no longer necessary now that he killed the buggers. So he, um, 
He, so he just does all the stuff. He avoids the people there because, you know, they go and congratulate him. And he, he feels bad for uh, killing all the buggers because it looks like they weren't sending any spaceships towards them. Uh, anyway. Then his uh, Valentine appears. She's 14 now. Uh, she she tells Xandar that she he can't come back to Earth. And she wants to protect him from Peter. Because if he goes back, Peter's going to use him. Peter's now a big figure in, in politics on Earth. Even though no one knows his identity yet. Except a few close people. And if he goes back, he's just going to be his pawn. So Ender agrees and he flies with Valentine and... Bunch of other ones. Mazar also joins them. They're gonna uh, fly to colonize the um, the planet of the buggers. Now, for Earth, it's gonna be fifty years until they get there. But for for them on this on the, the ship, it's only gonna be two years. So they reach there. They colonize. Uh, Endar studies the buggers. You know, he wants to understand them because the, the buggers they don't communicate in any way. Is there more like a hive mind? Because it, it was a real thing in the invasions, you know, how did they communicate? What did they do? How did they do it? And they are just like bugs in that regard. So Ender wants to understand them, says, you know, they don't have books, they don't have videos. He just, all he has to go by are the things that, you know, they would use for farming, for this, for that. To understand them through, uh, through those things. So time passes. Uh, oh, Endar also. Uh, Valentine writes books about well about Endar, the mainly you know, the story about the the buggers. And Endar also writes a story about the buggers. Uh, calls it Speaker of the Dead. And uh, then it's uh, published on Earth. Um, Peter reads it. Now Endar doesn't want anyone to know that he wrote it. And, but uh, Peter um, from Earth, he uh, asks to talk to them. He's 77 then, he has a uh, heart failure. Surprised that they don't have advanced medicine to help him. Maybe a heart transplant. Uh, that one was interesting, but yeah, he, he wants to talk to uh, Endar. So I guess that's it. It's kind of funny that the parents are never mentioned at least once. Like, you know, their parents passed away. I mean, I know they're not really the focus here, but still kind of just... Abandon them completely. So that's it on Peter. Um, it's been some years. Valentine's already 25. Uh, I think... Endar was 6. I think Valentine's either 8 or 9. So he's probably 20... 22, 23 maybe? Around that? Yes, I think so. And um, he... Another uh, ship's coming from Earth, and they want to start another, um, another uh, co a colony, a colony. But it, they want it to be a little uh, some some uh, distance away from the colony Endar's in, so that, you know they could trade amongst themselves, but also have their own lives. So he and some kid that was well born practically. He was three years old when he came to the planet, so um, he doesn't, uh, that's all he knows. He goes with Endar, and Endar sees that uh, um, in, in a valley there, something from his childhood. Because he's, um, when, when he was in uh, battle school, there was this, there were games there. And one game that they used to monitor him, he would see a giant, and he killed the giant. And then the giant became a skeleton and Ander could walk into it and then reach a valley with children that turned to werewolves. Anyway, all these images, the buggers seem to have reached his mind. And they built all this stuff before uh, the, the ships arrived. And Ander goes there by himself and finds the same tower, the same everything. And in there, there's a little white cocoon. And in that cocoon is like the last of the buggers. And their their queen or the two queens, one of the, she talks to Endar, I don't know through his head still, even though they're dead, and tells him you know we're, we're sorry. She says, I'm sorry that you know we went to your planet that we didn't understand, and we forgive you for uh, for killing us. 
But I ask you, you know, please put me, put me in a wet place where I can, you know, where we can live again. And Endar said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do this here, but I'll carry you with me. And when I find a planet where you can be peacefully left alone, I'll leave you there. He makes that promise. And then after that, he's tired of um, just staying on the colony and he and Valentine just go take a ship together and start going to other uh, planets. And that's it. That's the end. Okay, I'm sorry that was a little over the place. It's, it's much harder for me to summarize books, especially ones that, uh, well, it, it goes so much in between like this. But that was uh, Endar's game. It was, wow, it did not go how I expected it to. Now, I didn't remember much from my first read, but when I read this, I, I thought it would, it would go like, they got Ender into battle school, he would learn there a few years, then he'd move on, and then they would send him in a ship to the planet of the buggers, and he would, um, he would you know, get into a ship and he would fight them. And that that would be like the whole series till the end, and uh, and, and and that was it. Like it would the book, the last book will end with Endar defeating the buggers finally. That's how I thought it would go. And then when, when you know when he played that last test, and that happened, I was like, holy shit! I just I was so baffled. I was like, wait, what? I just I was so not expecting that. I, I mean it in a good way. That was the point. Was just I was so baffled at that. I thought you know there would be, there would be more. There would be the the buggers, and all that. And then it turns out the buggers weren't you know, any real evil aliens or anything like that. Just you feel really sad for them because in the end they weren't even trying to. Yeah, they wanted to colonize Earth, but they didn't realize that the humans were, uh, you know, that they would be able to communicate with them in any way. And then, you know, then just this, and it's, it's really sad. And turns out they uh, just killed them for nothing. Yeah, I get it, you know, you, either you kill me or I kill you. In the nature, that's often really the case, but... And here it's just sad that the buggers were ended, and... You know, poor Endar. His childhood is taken away from him. And, you know, what What, what does he do next? What does he do now? But, yeah, that, that totally took an unexpected turn for me. I granted, I haven't read uh, a lot of sci-fi in my life. So, maybe if I read a lot more, this wouldn't be as surprising. I suppose maybe the signs are kind of there that there was no real... Um, you know, even when he reached the school, there was no real... Um, no real lessons on the buggers. Even the videos that are always shown to the public are censored. And then it was never shown. Like the second invasion, those battles were never shown to e even Andar for some reason. And there was no, you know, no autonomy of these creatures, how they work. They're just the buggers. So yeah, that was, that was something. It was amazing, but it, it was like, holy shit. And when I finished reading, I was like, wait, could there really be more? What do you, what do you do? And, and not, not after I finished it, after that, uh, like, final battle, I was wondering, well, what's the rest of the series going to be about? Because it's Anders Saga. So, so yeah, it looks like if he visits other planets, then, yeah, there will be probably way more to tell. But I wonder where it's going to go. What is Endar going to be? What is it going to become? You know, he's away from Earth, so everyone he knew there is dead. All of his friends, um, by the time, you know, Peter contacted him in 77, all of his friends were probably, you know, had already possibly even grandchildren at that point. So it's just, you know, the poor Andar, he couldn't even uh, go back to his, uh, to, to Earth. I wonder if he will one day. I mean, they'll definitely remember him, I think. He's probably in history books and everything. But yeah, it's just, it, 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 it was wow. It, it was something. It, another reason I thought this would continue on to the whole series of Ender getting to the buggers was that there's uh, the last book is um, 
there's this uh, kid or guy that follows Endar and he's kind of like a shadow. All right, and sorry, that's not the the final book in the series. It's like a yeah, like a companion book. So I wonder who that kid is, and because I thought he was someone that was with Ender in school, but no, I I don't think so. Well, I no, I don't think so. Obviously, he's not since Endar, you know, long since he's finished school. But yeah, so that was Endar's game. Kid played a lot of games though, didn't have much of a childhood. That's left to be seen what this will do. It's really, uh, you know, terrifying what they've done to all those children just to get to this. And in the end, the buggers weren't really ne necessarily needed to be killed. And there you go. And they explained that the reason that they, um, they wanted a kid, they wanted someone who wasn't jaded from war. Why they couldn't send Rickman to it, they wanted someone who would take risks, who wouldn't be afraid. Who would just go for it. And that's why they needed a kid. Because an adult, even, you know, like a young adult, would still, you know, if you went through and all this stuff, would still be somewhat jaded, apprehensive, careful. Unlike a kid. See, it's, it's, it's all very evil how they used all these children, but I guess if you look at it from that point, it's understandable why, but... And why they lied to Andar, because if he was told that this was the battle, he probably wouldn't have... Because th those, in the simulation, those ships that he used, they had real men in there. Men that died. Because Andar didn't know that, he just thought, you know, it was just simulations. So, he... <laughs> yes. And th this, this was awesome. I definitely want to continue re uh, reading Andar's saga. I'm going to try to find the rest of the books, and I think this definitely might be a reread in the future as well. This has been fucking awesome. So yeah, that's it. That was Ender Saga. Oh, um, this is the edition I have. Uh, however, it's not bad. You, you see, there's a ship here, and maybe maybe that's supposed to be like the bugger's planet over there, possibly. Oh, yeah, that's it. So uh, let me know if you read uh, Endar's game. What would you think about it? It's quite a well-known book, I think. Uh, you, you hear about it, uh, at least here and there. At least I have. So yeah, uh, let me go. That is it. Uh, remember, collect what you're passionate about and share it on YouTube. Bye! <laughs>